I have a Halloween themed case for you today. It's Davis versus Dungeons of Delhi, and uh, the citation is 2019 Ohio 1457. And basic gist of this case is the plaintiff is injured at a haunted house. As she goes to this haunted house, I guess it's called the Dungeons of Delhi, and Part of this haunted house, the, the attraction is everything sort of encompassed inside the haunted house. The scares don't happen until inside the haunted house, and that's where it all happens. Well, the plaintiff in this case, for some reason before she even entered the haunted house, was getting chased by one of the employees, one of the actors, dressed as a ghoul or some sort of monster. Uh, she falls, the plaintiff falls, sustains injuries, and then she sues the dungeons of Delhi and uh, the person who was supposedly chasing her around that caused the injury. She filed a negligence claim. Uh, the defendants sought to get the case dismissed on the basis that she assumed the risk of any injuries she would sustain while at the haunted house, uh, which uh, assumption of the risk is a complete defense to a negligence case in, in the basic gist of that defense is uh, you assume the risks uh, associated with an activity. Uh, you know, you're assuming the risks that you know, are known for this activity. And the Court of Appeals in this case, I believe out of Hamilton County, which is Cincinnati area, um, did some research and couldn't find any Ohio cases that involved injuries at a haunted house, so they looked into other states. And there was, I believe, a Louisiana case where uh, someone tripped and fell as they were running away from uh, one of the haunted house employees who had a chainsaw. It was a real chainsaw, it had the chain removed, so you had the sounds and it was running and it scared her, so she started running away and she tripped and fell and uh, sued the haunted house. Well, that Louisiana court uh, threw out her case, basically holding she assumed the risk uh, that she would get scared and trip and fall uh, and this injury happened inside the haunted house area uh, there was another case i forget what state it was out of but basically the plaintiff is inside the haunted house gets scared by someone and she turns around runs into a cinder block wall sustains injuries and i know i shouldn't laugh but it, it is kind of amusing um again that court uh threw out her case basically um you know, she assumed the risk she would get scared and have that kind of reaction to one of the haunted house's attractions. Um, so the Court of Appeals here in Ohio is looking at these cases, but it somehow managed to distinguish this case from those other states, and it really focused on the fact that this incident and the injuries happened outside the haunted house, which wasn't part of the attraction itself. And because of that, um, it allowed the plaintiff to proceed with the, uh, the case and presumably allowed it to go to trial. Um, so for purposes of the Court of Appeals, that's where this case ended. Who knows how it was actually resolved, whether they went to trial and won, whether, um, whether they settled. But basically the Court of Appeals said here, when an injury happens around a haunted house, outside the haunted house, when that area isn't part of the attraction itself, um, that's not a risk associated with going to the haunted house. Basically, in order for the haunted house to have prevailed on this case, the scare, the interaction between the plaintiff and the uh, employee would have had to have happened inside the haunted house. So, um, Court of Appeals made that distinction. Um, you know, generally speaking, it, if someone came to me with one of these cases, I'd have a hard time taking it, it on because I think you know, it's pretty much well recognized that you, know, you go to a haunted house, you're expected to be scared and uh, something bad to happen.